Hi everyone and welcome back to our unit here in Norwich uh, in the honey room at the moment which has been converted to our table to carry on with our microscopy series of videos. Uh, if you're not familiar with the microscope and the microscopy videos that we've done uh, do check out uh, the Patreon page with all of the microscopy videos loaded up there. Uh, we're actually going through a uh, kind of ongoing series at the moment of producing pollen slides. Uh, if we can, we're going to try and do it all the way through the season. Uh, it's obviously still fairly quiet. It's February and uh, there's not really a great deal to do out with the bees at the moment. So while we've got the time, we're producing uh, some fairly straightforward, simple pollen slides. And actually, it's really good fun. It gives you an idea of the structure of the pollen. The pollen is obviously the protein that the bees uh, use uh, feeding to the larvae and it's really nice to be able to understand where that pollen is coming from. So if you go into your beehive and there's uh, pollen that's been dropped because the bees sometimes get a little bit clumsy and it drops off uh, the pollen baskets and it'll be on the floor, it'll be underneath the hive. You can pick that up and bring it back home and just have a look at it under the microscope and see exactly where the bees have been foraging. You can also do it with the honey as well, so that's something that we might take a look at as we get through into the season uh, and settle out, uh, sediment uh, some of the pollen from a sample of honey and actually see what the bees are foraging on and what's what's in our honey. So today we're looking at the snowdrop, Galanthus. Uh, it's one that I've produced um, images from before and at the moment the bees are really looking for anything out there that they can forage on. The brood nest is starting to increase in size and they really do need to get as much pollen into the colony as they possibly can. And you will see, certainly here in the UK, you'll see banks and banks of snowdrops. And if there are any bees around that area, they will certainly be foraging on it. And uh, it is a very, very important source of pollen for them. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit tricky for them because the temperatures drop quite quickly and we can have some very cold periods when the snowdrops are in flower. But at the moment, uh, certainly this weekend, temperatures into the double digits in Celsius, somewhere around 12, 13 degrees, 14 degrees and possibly even higher. The bees will certainly be out foraging. They'll be on all manner of different um, wild plants. The hazel is another one that's currently in flower and provides, uh, again, a valuable source of protein. And uh, they'll definitely be on the snowdrop. So we're going to just take a couple of these flowers. You don't need many. These have come out of the back garden. I've just popped them in an old container with some water in uh, just to try and keep them a little a bit fresher than kind of drying out overnight. Um, so these are cultivated snowdrops. Don't go digging up wild plants. Um, if you can get hold of some, I think maybe two or three years ago I produced a video where I actually bought the snowdrops from a garden centre. So if you want to have a look at um, the snowdrop pollen and you can't get hold of any uh, snowdrops then it would be worth uh, just popping to the garden centre and buying some cultivated snowdrops. So th what we need to do is to um, just expose um, the pollen so that we can get it onto a watch glass. If you're new to microscopy or you'd like to give microscopy a go do take a look at our website We've got lots of microscopy equipment listed there. It'll give you an idea of the, the kind of equipment that you need. And as I said, if you want to really get involved uh, with not just the microscopy, but checking out all the other videos that we've got, do take a look at our Patreon page uh, where we can give you lots of help and support and the information will be in the description beneath this video. So uh, the first thing we need to do is to just cut open a couple of these flowers to access the pollen. So all we have to do, uh, very gently, I probably ought to have had a slightly dumpier container, but we need to just cut 
cut the petals off to get into uh, the inner organs of the flower and again you don't really need to know all the, the workings of a flower in order to be able to get decent pollen slides. There are far too many people um, put too much emphasis on the science and not the fun. You really want to have a bit of a giggle when you're beekeeping and, and doing your microscopy. Um, so don't get bogged down in all the, the science of it. Uh, however, um, if you can get to this sort of stage, and I think this particular flower might have just gone over a little bit, but we should be able to get some pollen. You don't need more than a couple of flowers, really. Um, but if we can't get any pollen off this flower, then we've got another one that's just opening here and one beneath it, and we can try those as well. So we've exposed the flower, the inner workings of the flower. For those of you that are uh, maybe pursuing the BBKA microscopy uh, assessment module, uh, you will need to know some of the, the sciencey bits. So uh, the pollen is the male part of the, the reproductive system in a flower and these little sections up here that contain the pollen are called anthers and that's where the pollen is. You might be, I, you probably can't see, but I can detect that there's a little yellow um, coloration underneath here, which is probably pollen. So what we need to do is to take these off and get them into our watch glass. A watch glass is simply a concave uh, glass dish. It looks like the um, cover of a watch, an old-fashioned watch. So we'll just take these off very gently and get them into the watch glass and then we can try and wash some of the uh, pollen from the anthers uh, into solution. So we just have to be very careful. What I'm going to actually do is cut the flower head off the rest of the plant. So we'll just steady fingers, steady hands, we'll just cut that off and then I can transfer this down onto our watch glass like this and then we can have a look at um, removing the anthers and washing off some of the pollen but in the meantime I'm just going to move my little display of snowdrops because I'm certain that I'm going to knock that over so we'll just move that out of the way And we can continue now to deconstruct the, the flower. And we'll just cut a few more pieces off from around the base here. In fact, there's one of the anthers has just fallen off. We might actually be able to get the scissors right at the bottom and cut the anthers off so that we can wash off some of the pollen. Okay, so we now have the anthers. We've also got um, a couple of other pieces of the plant that we don't need so we'll just remove those and just tidy up as best we can before we put some isopropyl alcohol in here to wash it away. So we've separated the anthers from the rest of the plant. I've got my little stirry uh, rod here and I'm just going to put a few drops of isopropyl alcohol, isopropanol in there. I don't know whether you can see but the um, alcohol has now in some parts got some yellow staining and that will be the pollen washing off the anthers. So we don't need a huge amount of the alcohol 
and I'll just move the anthers around a little bit just to wash them and then we can remove them give it a bit of a swirl, move them to one side and you may well be able to see in the middle here we've got some yellow staining and that's going to be the pollen so we can remove the anthers now completely and start to work on cleaning up the pollen and getting it stained. So we've uh, removed the anthers, we've got our little puddle of isopropanol alcohol which we're now putting on our, our warming plate. And these are quite difficult to get, um, but I know that some people I've already spoken to about microscopy use a coffee cup warming plate, which they've been able to get online. So have a look for those because they're quite a useful alternative. So what we're doing is just warming the alcohol to evaporate it away from the pollen. Once we've done that, we can pop it onto a slide and actually use some glycerin jelly. So this is the mountant, and that's what the pollen will be suspended in on the microscope slide. And this particular glycerin jelly has already got stain in it, so you don't have to go through the process of staining the pollen separately. Uh, it doesn't give you as bright a pollen staining, but it does uh, allow you to get the contrast in the pollen so that you can see the pollen under the microscope. So what we'll do is we'll make one up with uh, this glycerin jelly, as we have before, if you've seen the other videos or if you want to take a look at the other videos. Uh, we've made them up in, in both ways before. And you do need to wash the pollen if you use the stain. We use a stain called safranin. Again, if you have a look at the website, it's listed on the website. And uh, it stains it really well, but you then have to wash it several times to remove the excess stain. So this is almost um, uh, ready to, to go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just deposit some of this on our one of our microscope slides, and then we'll add some of the glycerin jelly. So we've almost removed all of the alcohol. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of the alcohol with the pollen onto the slide, somewhere around the middle. And there'll be plenty of, um, plenty of pollen on that slide now. It's now going to evaporate away completely. And before we do the next stage, I'm just going to wash my little um, glass uh, dibber because we next need to put some of the, the glycerin jelly onto the microscope um, slide. But if I now put this glass rod into the glycerin jelly, there's going to be pollen on this glass rod, which will transfer into all of the glycerin jelly. So we need to make sure that we wash the glass rod before we use it. So I'll just do that. And then using our little guide here, we can um, make sure that the sample is in the center and get it all lined up accurately to go onto the microscope. So we'll just move the microscope slide onto the guide. Uh, and these, you can make these up, but I've just had several printed uh, for distribution to our patrons. Uh, so the next thing to do is to just add a drop of glycerin jelly into the middle of the slide, and this guide just helps me do that. I've washed the glass rod, so that's now in the middle. And what we can do is transfer this back onto the hot plate just to allow that to maintain its liquid state. It's probably way too much on there, but that's okay because it will run uh, via capillary action to the edge of the cover slip. And then I can just mix this around, excuse my fingers, just mix this around a little bit and that will take up the pollen. If I just put my finger at the back here, you can probably see. 
It will then take up the pollen and hold it in suspension. And we can then get the cover slip on. And the cover slip is just a little very thin glass sheet that goes on top of the glycerin and provides protection uh, on the top. So we can move that away now. I have my um, cover slips just at the side here uh, and these um, little tweezers allow me to, um, forceps allow me to place the cover slip onto uh, the sample uh, without hopefully getting any air bubbles in it. So again I'll bring the slide down onto my guide, get it square and then we can just spin this around and then I can pop the cover slip down. It's probably quite tricky for you to see it going in place. Uh, and I can square it off according to my guide and that will get it nicely in the, the centre. And then back onto the hot plate and by putting it back onto the hot plate uh, it has a, a couple of effects really. It liquefies the glycerin jelly again I can see that the cover slip's not exactly in the centre, so it will allow that glycerin jelly to become liquid so that I can reposition, but it also allows the glycerin jelly to um, move to the outside. The capillary action will draw it to the outside and we'll get excess glycerin jelly over at the edges. So I can bring it back down, pop it onto the, the guide, and while it's still liquid, just move the cover glass to one side, pop it back onto the hot plate and just leave that for a couple of seconds now just to settle and then we can pop it onto the microscope and see what we've got. We've got our microscope slide already. So on the microscope we've got four objective lenses. One is a four times, then there's a ten times, a forty times and a one hundred times and those will uh, magnify but you also have the magnification in the eyepiece um, optics as well. So these are 10 times magnification so the 10 times objective lens and the 10 times eyepiece lenses gives you a total magnification of 100 and then Really, for pollen, we only need to go up to the 40 times magnification, which will give us 400 times uh, a magnification on the image. I tend to start on the 100 times. There's no need, really, to go down, drop down to the 4 times, which would give you 40 times magnification. So we'll pop the slide in. We've got a little slide holder arm here. And then... When it's on the 40 times, I turn the slide table uh, adjustment, the focusing knobs. Um, with the four, with the sorry, with the 10 times, you can take the slide all the way to the top of the rack on this microscope, and then we rack it back down to bring it into focus. Now I'm recording this on our um, computer, so you should hopefully now get the images that we've got uh, as we uh, do this in real time. So I'm now bringing the um, table back down and that will bring the pollen into focus. So we keep going, taking it through until eventually you will see it come into focus. There, we just missed it. There we are. So now I can use the fine focus and also uh, the adjustment to move the slide around on the table. Now that's quite an interesting image there. So if I focus there, you can see the, the pollen grains quite clearly. They have a, 
a, a nice kind of pink tinge to them. And that black circle to the left is a trapped air bubble. So uh, when I put the slide down, I haven't been careful enough to exclude all of the air, or when I've stirred in the glycerin jelly onto the pollen, uh, I've incorporated some air, so that's why we've got that little black um, circle, black dot with the white dot in the middle. That's an air bubble. So you can see the, the pollen grains quite clearly there. That's quite nice. So the next thing to do is to switch up to the 400 times. So I'll just take the table back down, turn the turret so that the objective lenses uh, switch the 40 times and then we can take it all the way back up until we're almost touching the objective lens with the slide and then we uh, rack it back down, bring it back down until we see the, the pollen and there we've got a nice example. Let's see if we can move them more centrally. Three pollen grains of the snowdrop galanthus and uh, you know, the snowdrop pollen isn't the most exotic shape it's a smooth shaped um, grain um, we've got some uh, far more exciting pollen grains to show you as we go through into the, the summer uh, certainly the spring and summer we've got some really um, weird shaped um, pollen that we'll be able to get on the microscope but I think that gives you a really good idea as to um, the pollen that's available to our bees uh, in, uh, in the snowdrop. So we've produced one slide which uh, gave us some really good um, images of the pollen what I'd like to do now is just very quickly show you how staining it with the safranin stain uh, gives you a much brighter image. So I'm just, you can probably see the stain on the glass rod here. It really does stain, so just mind your fingers if you do use any of this. Uh, so we're going to pop just a little bit down onto the watch glass just to stain the pollen that we've got here. I'm going to pop the lid back on the safranin and wash the glass rod before I do anything else because otherwise uh, we'll end up with a bit of a disaster. So you can see the uh, stain. This is now staining the pollen that we've got on our watch glass and uh, if we left it like that, it would just obliterate any detail. So we need to wash it, and we wash it using the alcohol, the isopropanol alcohol. So I'm just going to pop that down, wash the glass rod, and then we'll start washing our pollen sample with the alcohol. So uh, we need a little bit of alcohol. Uh, so you can buy the alcohol in, uh, in larger bottles and then just decant it because you don't need too much and you don't want to spill a load of alcohol. So a few drops into the watch glass, not many. Keeping a little plastic pipette to one side specifically for the alcohol. And then we're just going to swirl the alcohol around and that does a couple of things really. It washes the pollen and removes some of the stain, um, but it also concentrates the pollen into the centre of the watch glass. So you can swirl it around like this and then we need to remove as much of the alcohol as we can. Now this I'm doing very quickly. Um, you can use coffee filter papers which you can buy online. You can use kitchen roll uh, but if you use kitchen roll fold it first so that you've got a clean corner because if you use one of the ragged edges you might find that some of the fibers will drop off into the 
solution and then you'll pick them up and get them onto the slide uh, and into the image. So you can see that it's sucking up the alcohol. It will draw off some of the pollen as well, but there'll be plenty of pollen in the sample for you to be able to um, lose a little bit without too much of a, a problem. So I'm just going to draw off a little bit more. I can see literally a stream of pollen in the bottom there, so I know I've got plenty of pollen. If you've got uh, a sample of a plant where it doesn't give up a lot of pollen, then it might be that you'll want to um, do this a lot more carefully than, than I'm doing in this demonstration. Uh, so a bit more alcohol in there, pop the lid back on. Now you'll probably want to do this several times, maybe four or five or six times uh, until you get to a position where you've washed enough of the stain off that it doesn't obliterate the sample. But what I'll do, this is our second washing, so I will pop these uh, samples on a slide and we'll have a look. So it's the same process, only this time we use clear glycerin jelly as a mountain. So I'm just going to wipe around the edge just to clean off any of the uh, spare stain that's kind of leached up to the top of the watch glass just to tidy that up a bit. So I've now got a sample in the bottom there. If I use the kitchen towel to draw off much more, I will start to remove the pollen. So the easiest way to get rid of the rest of this alcohol solution is to pop it onto your hot plate and that will evaporate it and then you can put the clear glycerin into the middle, mix it up and then we'll get it onto the microscope slide. As you can see I've swapped the glycerin jelly with the stain in it for the clear glycerin jelly and all we're going to do, a clean glass rod, it's been washed, take a drop of the glycerin jelly and just allow it to drip down onto the watch glass. Now, I'm not touching the watch glass so we can happily dip it back in here. Uh, just a couple of drops so that I've got enough to be able to mix around. Just leave that for a second while I put the lid back onto the glycerin jelly. So I can now move the glycerin jelly. It's a little bit awkward to do this without obscuring what I'm trying to show you, but I, I'm just going to move this around to stir the pollen and distribute it through the glycerin jelly. There's probably enough here to make up a dozen or more slides, to be honest. Uh, move that to one side, keep it warm. We'll leave the little glass rod in it and then I'm going to pop our washed microscope slides. One of the things that I have done off camera is to make sure that the microscope slides are washed, the cover slips are washed, just to remove any grease that might be on there. And then what we're going to do, uh, once the microscope slide is nice and warm, we take a drop of our mixture just pop it into the middle and then I can just drop it down onto the guide make sure that it's somewhere close to the middle let's make sure we've got another drop in there so we've got plenty of our sample put this back up onto the hot plate to warm it and then I can get my forceps, my tweezers positioning the cover slip. We'll move it to one side so I can pick it up easily and then we come down with the microscope slide, pick up the cover slip, position everything and then we lower. Now that actually dropped down quite heavily so I'm fairly certain that we'll end up with some air bubbles.
uh, but we'll just reposition that and then back up onto the hot plate and that will allow the glycerin jelly to use capillary action to be drawn to the outermost edge of our cover slip. Obviously if, you, if you're producing these microscope slides for instance for the BBKA microscopy assessment then you want to take your time with them uh, you want to make sure that they're uh, as good as you can possibly get them. So while that's just sorting itself out there I'm just going to remove our initial slide and just quickly write on here with a, a marker snowdrop because we can keep these uh, and the date and I can just keep that to one side so that if we want to take a look at some pollen samples and compare it to something uh, we've got a, a slide ready. I think this will be uh, ready for us to put onto the microscope now so we'll just clear some of this equipment out of the way and then we can have a look at the slide uh, on the computer again. So we've got our slide uh, on the microscope and uh, we're recording the image again and you can see almost immediately well, we've got another air bubble in there but there's some really nice looking uh, pollen stained quite nicely uh, we might want to just give them another wash but you can see uh, the structure there and that's at a hundred times magnification so let's just increase the magnification to uh, 400 times there's a couple of air bubbles let's see if we can just find several now you might want to get perhaps more uh, pollen in the picture so you might want to have slightly more pollen than just the one or two grains that you can see as we run through here um, but it does give you a really good image and show you the uh, the structure uh, the outer layer of the pollen called the exine and the inner layer called the intine and it's a really vibrant stain looks really quite nice let's see if we can find two or three more there's another nice image of snowdrop pollen uh, for those of you on patreon uh, i hope you enjoyed that uh, there'll be more pollen videos to come uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, then please do take a look at the Patreon page. Uh, there's lots and lots of videos, lots of content in our back catalogue, but we'll also be producing a lot more videos going through into the new season. Uh, and we'll also be posting a few videos here on YouTube this season, so do look out for those too. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, and also have a look for the little bell symbol, and if you click on that, it will alert you every time we upload a new video. Uh, we're going to head off and uh, go and check on some bees now to see how they're doing through this winter, uh, but we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.